Greetings, 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 my sports to the bone family. Blessings, blessings. Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are doing okay. Hope you're enjoying your day so far, my peeps. All right, so I have a couple of things that I want to share with you guys in this one. I have an article here that is covering an interview that was done by Chris Gale. And he was basically talking about how T20 leagues around the world, you know, is posting a threat to West Indies cricket and players need to play more club cricket. We're going to go through it, my peeps. Um, plus, we had a couple of West Indians in action earlier today in the UAE T20 League. So we're going to go through those two games that were played also. So just make sure that you hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notification bell, leave a like and drop a comment. All right, my peeps. So just bear with me as I read through this article here. So the headline says, it's something the board really has to look at. Gale sees rise of franchise leagues around the world as a threat to West Indies cricket. That is the headline. And I'm going to go through all of the article and um, I will give you the quotes, you know, from, from Chris Gale. So just bear with me. It says, former West Indies and Jamaica all-rounder Chris Gale believes the growing domestic game is the way the region will return to the pinnacle of world cricket right in an interview with onlycricket24.com the 43 year old acknowledged that the deterioration of west indies cricket in the last few years due mostly to the emergence of an of a number of franchise leagues around the world this is Gail, and I quote, It's something the board really and truly has to look at, and I can see whatever part I can play in that as well. Um, he went on to say, A lot of players are playing cricket in the United States now. The USA is an option for cricketers to go there and make a living. But we are struggling here in the Caribbean, end quote. How ironic. <laughs> Let me continue. He went on to say, and I quote, I think cricket took a wrong turn, but hopefully we can actually develop the game. Club cricket is something to look into as well. We are not seeing a lot of cricket. I'm speaking from a Jamaica point of view, end quote. That I can agree with. There's not a lot of cricket being played in Jamaica. Not a lot of club cricket. Not a lot of um, club cricket. And I, and, I, and I assume most of the, the, the rest of the region. So it says, the article went on and says, the Jamaica Cricket Association's Premier League um, Premier competition, the two-day Senior Cup, gets underway on February 11th after a two-year absence. Now, Gail also feels he has a part to play in the growth of the regional game but when the time is right this is it this is what he had to say and i quote i can help in a few departments not in all but first and foremost i have to find time for myself i still have a lot on my plate from a personal point of view but when it comes on to west in this cricket they will always have my support. When it comes on to Jamaica cricket, they will always have my support as well. He went on to say, I have my academy so we can get some younger players, search for new talent and just help kids on a whole. That's my plan, end quote. Now, these are some good plans from Chris Gale. These are some solid plans to try and get his academy up and running again. Try and get youngsters um, loving the game. Try and um, building a rapport with the youngsters. You understand? Um, I, I definitely agree with him. There's not a lot of cricket being played out there in the region, um, in, the, in, in Jamaica especially. And the players need to play a lot, of, a lot more club cricket. But I am just wondering... As somebody that I consider to be a veteran of the game. Somebody that I consider to be one of the greatest to have played the game. I am, wonder, I am wondering, when did this hit him? When did this hit Chris Gale? 
that you know he needs to come out and, 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 and start advocating for these sort of cricket start advocating for club cricket start advocating for a lot of cricket be, to be played I know I'm going to get a lot of bashing from, for, for saying this but I'm going to say it nonetheless this is what this platform is built on critiquing things it was just a couple probably years ago I heard this same um, Chris Gale saying oh T20 cricket is the future and um, T10 cricket is definitely something that he's looking forward to catching on to. Can I, remember, can I recall him encouraging the youngsters to take up club cricket and, to, and, to, and, to, and to, to play the longer format of the game? Having said that, he is right. Listen to me now, peeps. I know that quite a few of us, we don't like when we, when we critique or when we talk about our so-called heroes or greats. Listen to me now, peeps. I agree. Gale is one of the greatest to have played the game. Doesn't mean that we can't look into certain things and wonder certain things. Right? It's good to see him come out in, um, coming out and preaching like this now. Because it is never too late for a show or rain, as they say. But, you know, would have been nice, especially when he had the ear of people, to encourage youngsters to play club cricket and to play... And, and, and to play the longer format of the game. He's right that the USA especially provides an opportunity for players to make a living for themselves. And I 100% agree. Because not everybody will be given a CWI contract. So people need to go and, and, and earn a living. I am just wondering how ironic it is now that we are hearing these sort of things from Gale once he, is, once he has, he has no... I don't want to say he's no longer at the pinnacle of T20 cricket or T10 cricket and all of that. But I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering, my viewers and subscribers, how, you know, it took him, really, it took him a, a long time to really, to really understand that coming out and voicing his opinion is important. It is important. And we want to see more guys like this coming out and voicing their opinion. As I said, I know I'm going to take a knock for saying these things. But I am used to it. I am used to it. I am used to it. But I am, you know, I am happy that he, he, he saw it fit to come out and say that playing club cricket is, 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 is the way forward. And um, CWI need to find a way to invest and to, and to develop the game and all of that. You know, he still said that probably T20 cricket is the way we will find our way back to the top. But it's really interesting. It's really interesting to hear these things coming from Chris Gale. You understand? And I am just going to keep a close eye to see um, if we're going to have any other T20 specialists and T10 specialists coming out and speaking like this. You understand? Um, he has been very active over the last couple of days on social media. I am really happy to hear him saying all of this. You know, uh, as I said, I know I'm going to take a nap for pointing the, this out, the obvious out. But I'm also saying that kudos to Chris Gale for coming out and speaking like this. It goes a far way. It definitely goes a far way. You know, just like when we hear some of these um, top guys come out and, and, and advocate to play different T20 leagues around the world and youngsters listen to them. It is the same way that youngsters will listen to these guys advocating, telling them that they need to set a good platform playing club cricket. That is all I am saying. That is all I am saying. It works two ways. It works both ways. Coming out and advising the youngsters to explore all different opportunities is good. But when you're able to give up advice and zoom in on what actually makes you a good cricketer, that advice cannot go unnoticed. And I definitely, you know, had to point it out. As much as I, I, I have to call him out for being one of those that, you know, was flying the tweet, the, 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 according to him, T20, West Indies cricket took a wrong turn with players going all over to play T20 cricket and all of that. But at least he's coming back now to say that club cricket playing good four-day red ball cricket is the way to go. I have to say kudos for that. You understand? So I'm going to keep a close eye on all of that to see how it, how it, how it goes throughout the rest of the, the time. So that is my little piece on Chris Gale and what he had to say. Um, so the final thing before I go... We had a couple of T20 games in the UAE. 
we had the Abu Dhabi team, um, Abu Dhabi Knight Riders team going up against um, the, 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 the Warriors, I think. Right? And um, let me see here. Now, we had a couple of West Indians in action. The Warriors ended up winning that game by four wickets. So the, uh, the Andre Russell's team, the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, they batted first and they were able to put a total of 149 on the board. 149 for four. And um, Russell, he had 33 from 28. Um, Russell, uh, yeah, uh, let me see. Russell had 33 from 28. And uh, Brandon King, he remained not out on one off one, right? Uh, in terms of the bowling, in terms of the bowling for the, for the other team, we had Akil Hussein bowling four overs, giving away 28 runs, picking up two wickets. So, uh, hold on, I think I, I, am, I am giving her the wrong information here. Let's go again. So, the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, uh, they, they, they batted first. Yeah, here we go. Abu Dhabi Knight Riders batted first. And they were able to post that 149 that I mentioned just now. 149 for four. And Jairus to get in um, that 33 there. Uh, let me see the bowlers. The bowlers we had. Uh, we didn't have any West Indian bowling in that, in, in, in that team there. So let me just skip over to the, to the chase. And uh, in the chase we had. Let me see the top square here. In that chase right there. Alright. Hold on to my peeps. Alright, good. Here we go. So in that chase, um, the Warriors were able to get 150 for 6. Winning that game by 4 wickets. Yeah, man. And uh, where the bowlers are concerned, the West Indians, Akil Hussein had 4 overs. Uh, gave away 28 runs. Picked up 2 wickets. Andre Russell, he bowled one over, gave away 16 runs without a wicket. And Sunil Narayan bowled four overs, 27 runs, didn't pick up a wicket. So um, that is how that went in that game there. Uh, we had another game where the Delhi Capitals, um, they went down. So Rafman Powell and his team got defeated uh, by, by, the, by, the, by the Vipers. So, you know, the Vipers won that game by 12 runs. So... The Vipers batted first and made 149 for four, and they were able to restrict the Delhi Capitals for 120, uh, 137 for five. So the uh, the Vipers, all right. So the Vipers, uh, Sheffield Rutherford, he got 22, 22 off 18. Sheldon Cottrell didn't score in that game, and bowling. For the other team, we didn't have any West Indian bowling there. Uh, Ravman Powell, he tried his best to get his team on a good standing, you know. You know, they lost quite a few early wickets. And uh, Ravman Powell, he remained not out. Of, he got 34 from 26. So he was the only West Indian that batted there. But bowling for the other team, Cottrell, was in pretty good form. He bowled uh, three overs, picked up one wicket for 20 runs. So that is how the West Indians performed in that game there. So we eventually got through it, my, my peeps. A little bit of technical difficulties as I was working through the score, but we got there. Big up on yourself, my peeps. Let me know what you think in the comment section.